In today's video, we're going to go over cars, um, everything you need to know about cars, how to do them, when to do them, um, what kind of tension to use while you're doing them, how often to do them. Uh, CARS stands for Controlled Articular Rotations, and basically what that means is that CARS are um, active rotational movements through your end range of that joint. Um, CARS are ideally performed first thing in the morning every day, and the reason that we do this is that it is uh, kind of a multi-pronged approach. What it does is it helps maintain the range of motion that you do have. Uh, it also helps to communicate information about the joint. So when you're using that kind of rotational movement through end range, you're providing the maximal amount of afferent feedback to the central nervous system about where that joint is in space, what it does. Um, it also lubricates the joint with synovial fluid and makes it better prepped to go throughout the day. And it can be used as a diagnostic as well. You can basically tell um, how much, like if you've got some pain issues, if you have room for improvement in motor control, uh, what you might want to do moving forward if you need more range of motion. Uh, we use CARS as an assessment tool, so we can basically tell how much motor control the person has. So we ask you to isolate a specific joint. If you're unable to isolate the joint, that is um, kind of a fault of not enough motor control. If you just lack range, you will also see that in your car. So for example, your shoulder car, maybe you can't quite go overhead without bending your elbow, lifting your scap, and pulling your head over. <laughs> so um, it's a diagnostic uh, and an assessment tool, as well as a maintenance program, um, as well as exercise. So you can do cars at varying intensities to get a different amount of exercise uh, kind of feedback out of those. You can do them ultra high intensity, which can be very, very challenging. Um, but ideally, you're doing them daily as a morning routine. And the morning routine is done at about a 30% to 40% tension. While you're doing your cars, no matter what tension level you're doing the cars routine at, the body is held to a higher degree of tension. So say I'm doing a 30% effort with my shoulder car, I wanna hold tension in the body at a 40 to 50%. So everything else feels a little bit more tense than the working joint. What this does is basically prevents compensation um, and it prevents unwanted joint coupling. So we are trying to specifically target one joint at a time, trying to build a good engram in the brain for what that joint does, where it is in space. And if you're constantly recruiting other body parts when you're doing a car, you basically miss out on that feedback. So um, the active motion is also intended to um, tune the capsule and ligament. So rather than just kind of doing a passive car or doing a really rapid, like flinging the arm through space, um, the, the muscular movements and muscular contraction communicate uh, and provide feedback through the ligament and capsule. So those are not passive um, elements of the joint as we once thought. They are actually kind of waiting for information and force from the muscle to basically communicate and understand where the body is in space. So when we do our cars routine, we're trying to do them as best we can every day. So every day you're trying to do them a little bit better and a little bit better. What that means is with better technical control, so as precise as possible, as with as little coupling from other joints as possible, at the precise um, degree of tension that is demanded or that you're trying to do, um, all of this basically enhances your, your base motor program. So whatever the the brain understands of that shoulder joint specifically. Uh, it gives the shoulder joint more independence, it gives it more stability, it gives it more protection, um, it gives it a better map in the brain, and then that joint plays better with all of the other joints. So it really kind of behooves us to try to do your cars as best you can. We're also always trying to expand the circle. So when you're using your kind of the outer limits of motion of that joint, that is also protective and stabilizing and providing that, that new feedback. So if we use pails and rails um, in classes to improve your range of motion and expand that, we immediately want to follow that up with cars because that, again, kind of um, reestablishes neurological control over greater ranges of motion, which is essentially the definition of mobility. Um, so you're going to try to do these cars every day, in the morning at least, you can also do them for a warm up, and then you can also do them at higher intensities for exercise. When you first start doing your cars, because we're trying to do them perfectly, it's really important to follow the coaching points videos 
Uh, it may, may seem a little bit tedious, but if you're really paying attention, you may pick up some new information that you missed on the first, second, third pass. Once you get really good at them, um, following the coaching points, then you can kind of go back to just kind of following along with the, the fast moving cars routine that we provide. But I would really encourage you to check back in with that, um, the coaching points cars routine, because it just, it is really, really imperative that you perform the cars precisely. Um, other than that, cars can also be used for rehab. So uh, once you have injured a joint, the current um, recommendation to immobilize that joint is actually very harmful because what winds up happening is the body basically lies down a bunch of fibrotic tissue and scar tissue in place of healthy muscle tissue, um, which prevents kind of that like nice gliding and sliding of those tissues. Um, the Kinstretch FRC folks call that bioflow of tissue. And it obviously, you can picture that scar kind of um, holding those tissues from doing what they're supposed to do, you're more likely to tear and re-injure that point. But if you're doing cars, um, using that range of motion, it essentially prevents that fibrotic tissue from occurring. So when you're doing your regular cars routine or if you're doing them for rehab, we're trying to avoid painful ranges of motion. So as again, part of that diagnostic and assessment, if you're doing your shoulder car and you feel a closing angle joint pain, so when the joint is sh on the shortening side, if you feel like a kind of a pinch point pain, take note of that. Um, that might be something that you need to actually seek out a therapist to fix uh, because it is kind of angle specific and you can, I think, get rid of it with mobility training, but I think it just takes way, way longer in our experience. Better to go seek out, um, we like functional release practitioners, um, which is the manual therapy version of kin stretch stuff. Anyways, so you're trying to avoid painful ranges of motion. So do not grind through pain. If you feel stretching pain, that's good. Like, oh yeah, that's a stretch. Great, but it's, ooh, that's a pinch. Stop. <laughs> so uh, same thing with rehab. If you're trying to rehab a joint, you're trying to discover like what is my pain-free range of motion that I have and just continue to try to expand that every day. Uh, I think that that's basically it. We've covered, yep, that's, I think that that's all of my notes on cars. So again, um, cars, first thing in the morning, 30% uh, tension, tension higher in the rest of the body, 40 to 50% tension, uh, trying to perform them as perfectly as possible. Um, you can do them prior to exercise as a warm up to prep the joints for what you're about to do. Um, and then you can do them at higher intensities at any point inside of an exercise program as exercise in and of itself. Um, we're constantly trying to expand the circle, make the cars bigger, um, and also trying to maximize the technical quality of the cars as we do them. Um, that's it. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, doing your cars every day. What you will notice uh, over time is that the joints will be less grindy. I think that that is because it is getting rid of some of that fibrotic tissue that's accumulated throughout your life. Uh, the joint just seems to feel better, function better. Um, I've gone a period of time when we opened this gym without doing cars and I noticed a big difference when I started doing them again. So I recommend, it seems kind of tedious, it seems a little bit simplistic, but it really does have a big effect. So if you can commit to it and stick to it, the routine is relatively quick. Once you get good at it, you can knock your cars out in uh, under five minutes and it's the best thing you can do for your joint health moving forward. Okay, stay tuned for um, other videos on pails and rails and stretch physiology. Thanks.